More on this now with Matt Whitaker, former acting attorney general for the United States, who hails from Iowa. Good morning. Proud Iowan. Hello, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> proud? Uh, still proud this morning? Here we are days uh, later? Wondering. I am, because... You know, it, what you saw is actually a tale of two parties. The, the Democrats had all sorts of problems. The Republicans, I was there, and, uh, you know, the President Trump's reelection campaign was a well organized machine, and the Republican Party of Iowa reported the results for the biggest turnout for a reelect uh, ever. So it, it was really, um, it's really a tale of two parties, and, and, and it's a shame that the Democrat Party of Iowa couldn't uh, do something they've been doing since 1976 when Jimmy Carter won the caucuses, and that is just get the, the votes to the headquarters and count yeah. them. Uh, no argument that there's chaos and certainly more chaos for Iowa Democrats, but just real quick on that point. There was some chaos for Republicans, let's remember, in 2012, right, when Mitt Romney was initially declared the winner in Iowa, and then with some counting, it was, oh, hang on, it was actually Rick Santorum. Yeah, and that was because the vote was so close. I think it was in seven or 14 votes uh, difference, but, but you're right. And I see the same thing playing out here where we keep holding at this weird 62% and somehow, uh, you know, Buttigieg has this advantage uh, in the delegate equivalent, but mm -hmm. Bernie's leading the popular vote. So I think it's going to be very interesting when the dust settles as to see who actually wins Iowa. Yeah, and as you say, you're a proud Iowan. That's why I wanted to have you on and talk about it. A yeah. uh, proud supporter of the president. You talked about being there on the ground. He had an incredible turnout for an incumbent. We've heard about uh, setting records and all the rest. But I also wanted to have you on and talk about the investigative aspect of this. Because it's one thing to figure out the results, and we're all waiting for that. But you, as the former acting attorney general of the United States, what kind of investigations may there be? Because there have been supporters of Bernie Sanders, for example, saying, Wait a second. I, we think there's some funny business going on here. It's leading to conspiracy theories. I'm not trying to spread those, but I'm wondering, will there be an investigation to get to the bottom of what went wrong and find out if there was something nefarious? Remember, the Iowa caucuses is a party function. The state secretary of state doesn't run this election. It is a pure both parties are in charge of tabulating the results. I think the key here is full transparency. Um, you know, each of the candidates, and I was down in Centerville on Monday night, and I saw a very strong uh, Buttigieg uh, uh, turnout. And so, you know, it's hard to tell, depending on where you're looking at this state, who was the most popular candidate. Obviously, in some of the college towns, uh, Bernie Sanders was, was more popular. But that being said, as I, I think fundamentally, since they have the paper backups, uh, it mm -hmm. is going to be, there is going to be full transparency, and we will ultimately know the exact tally uh, really on all three. And l listen, the, the, the fundamental issue is the Democrat Party of Iowa made this too complicated. It is not that hard. There's 1,600 caucus sites to collect those, you know, have people call in the results mm -hmm. and tabulate them. It's something that's happened, again, since 1976. Uh, we had Dan Henninger on earlier, and he told Sandra that maybe the winner of all of this may not actually be the folks who were caucusing that day. It might actually be Michael Bloomberg. Watch. So it's pretty clear to me that Mike Bloomberg won Iowa. Uh, look, Mike Bloomberg's candidacy is based on the idea that uh, Joe Biden might fade. Uh, Joe Biden just faded in Iowa. Mike Bloomberg, he's got the money, he's got the gravitas, he's willing to fight with Trump, and I think his numbers are going to rise very smartly over the next month. React to that and react also to the idea that we've spent so much time saying, how would Joe Biden do head-to-head -head, uh, with President Trump? He may come in fourth here, or worse, uh, in Iowa, and he's right. having trouble in New Hampshire. Talk about the state of the race. Well, really, the demise of the Iowa caucuses on the Democrat side is going to be Mike Bloomberg. If you can show that you can spend enough money, millions, if not a billion dollars, to get the nomination, then the Iowa caucuses in New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina are all irrelevant because it's all about the big states, Super Tuesday and beyond. But, you know, the state of the race, I think it's very interesting. You know, I, I know this president's not afraid of any of these folks and uh, a head-to-head -head matchup. I think Joe Biden has had some challenges. He's been in Iowa since the 90s running for president. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to get fourth in, in Iowa caucuses, I think, demonstrates that, you know, he's not the strongest candidate and, and not the preference of the Democrat Party and where they stand today. I think Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and the liberal wing, uh, it's their turn. They, their, their backers are enthusiastic, and I really expect one of those two will be the nominee. Uh, last one on this point, um, when you say the president's not afraid of any of the Democrats in the race, uh, why all the tweeting about Mike Bloomberg uh, and the money he's spending? Is, is the campaign concerned uh, that if Bloomberg does emerge after Super Tuesday as either the front runner or a leading contender higher up in the polls than he is now, that he could be formidable with that war chest? 
Well, I just heard yesterday or the day before Mike Bloomberg actually saying that the president's formidable and has a large pile of cash. You know, Mike Bloomberg, I think when this dust settles and he's not the nominee, he might as well have just put his bi millions, if not billions of dollars in a fireplace and burned it. Because I just I just think the American people do not want what he's selling. He's, he's what made him maybe effective sometimes as a as a uh, the the. the mayor of New York following Rudy Giuliani's policies, I think ultimately, you know, he's having to step away from all the things that made it successful. So I think, you know, Mike Bloomberg, again, the president, I, I was with him last Thursday, yeah. uh, and I, I just think he is excited about a general election where he can demonstrate what he's accomplished for the American people and 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 lay out another four years of what he can accomplish. Uh, he certainly had that stage last night and laid out those accomplishments, as you say. Yep. Uh, last point on uh, Iowa's first in the nation status. You mentioned this a moment ago. David Yepsen, who we all know is one of the deans uh, among the reporters there on the ground in Iowa. He had some interesting tweets. Had a good time, he said, but as I told John and Amy from PBS, this will probably be the last caucus we'll have to worry about, adding, sorry, I was right, RIP caucuses, and after the G GOP fiasco of 2012, which we mentioned, Iowa probably should not even try. Here you have the dean uh, of the media establishment there in Iowa admitting this may be done. What say you as a proud Iowan? Uh, I'll take the, the contrary to that, Ed, and I really think the Iowa caucuses will be back in 2024. Uh, there is no better way to start this process. Iowans are very engaged, as you know, in kicking the tires on all these candidates and finding out who can? Who is presidential timber? And I think there is. Uh, once the parties go back to the drawing board and figure this out, and the Democrat Party in Iowa figures out how to count votes, I really think at the end of the day, the Iowa caucuses are going to be back in 2024 and be successful. All right, an optimistic view of what might be ahead. In the meantime, Matt, as you know, we are still waiting for the results from the Iowa Democratic Party. We've got most of them, but not all of them. Matt Whitaker, appreciate you coming in. Thank you.